Hello and welcome to the Crochet Cakes YouTube channel. It is 2022. We are still a crafty channel and lover of all yarny goods, but for this episode, we are going to be working on the Trust Cal. Now, last year, feels weird saying that, but it was last year, um, I'd been a well, actually, no. I had talked about a shawl that I, this one right here, that I was planning to frog back. And several of you actually ixnayed that idea and said, oh, would you please finish the design? It seems wonderful. And I know that a lot of people love making shawls because they are quick, satisfying projects. They are very useful and, you know, they are just a great way to use up some of your stash. And as you can see behind me, I've got quite a stash. Um, up here we have our indie dyed wool yarns. Anyway, so I decided, well, I do want to finish the, the shawl design for those people that wanted it, but how can I make this more fun? And then it came to me, let's do a cowl, but it's kind of a mystery trust cowl because I haven't designed the shawl yet. I just know the stitch pattern we're using, the stitches, and more or less vaguely the stitch counts. So you guys are gonna have to trust me on this and pick out some yarn that you like. And I've picked out mine. I'll share it with you in a little bit. Now, um, it's also a trust. I am, we're trusting each other here, right? Because. I'm just giving you the idea and working through it together and if it doesn't work, we'll work out the kinks together. And at the end of this cow, I will write up the pattern for, you know, the, like the official pattern too, so that we can share it with other people and once I write that pattern, I will of course credit all of you for your participation and kind of your, and your design help. So I hope that this is still an idea that interests you and that you are as excited as I am to move forward with the Trust Cal. Now, in order to move forward, you need to pick out 120 grams of yarn, so basically a sock set. And it's called a sock set because knitters will usually use a contrasting yarn for their cuffs, heels, and toes. And crocheters can do them too, by the way. I'm not, I'm not being um, elitist here with knitting. But I've had this wonderful sock set that I've just, I drool over it constantly. And I think mine actually brings 125 grams of yarn. Uh, I can double check that for you. Oh yeah, no, sorry, it's 120 grams of yarn. So this is the yarn, it is beautiful. It is, I'm not crazy, my mother had me test it. Do you know where that's from? Let me know, let me know down below if you know where that's from. Anyway, that's a beautiful kind of dove gray base with lovely splashes of greens, all shades of greens, some raspberries, some oranges. Oh, it's such a beautiful yarn. And it is 100 grams of the main one, House of Liberty base. It's 85% superwash EF Merino and 15% nylon. And the contrasting sock, I mean the contrasting color, which is a lovely bright green, it's a 20 grams, 80 meters baby elf base in the color Nerd. So, I love this yarn. It is from Stitchcraft and Wizardry, my friends over in Australia, and I've been hoarding it. I'm not ashamed to say that I've been hoarding this yarn. But without further ado, let us uh, give a final round of instructions. If you need any clarifications, the, it will be written in the description box below. But essentially, I'm gonna be releasing two videos. Um, yeah, two videos. So the first video is um, this one, and here you will find the stitch up tutorial for the main part of the shawl because we are making a crescent shaped shawl but we are starting it from the middle and moving towards. I will explain that a bit later on in the video but trust me it's gonna be fun. So once we've had that stitch pattern down which spoiler I used 10 grams of yarn 
So I'm just saying it, if you wanna take this shawl to use up your minis, it'll be great. Okay, so once we've done that panel together, I will release a, another video that's gonna discuss how we're gonna form the crescent, and then we'll repeat that crescent for the other side, because we're gonna work it essentially in three pieces, middle and then left and right sides. That will make more sense when the Clarissa of the past shares with you how this is all gonna come together. Not because I've made the shawl. As you can see, I haven't even caked my main piece of yarn. Well, my main. You guys know what I'm talking about. And you will also need a 3.5 millimeter hook. So, so anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this uh, cal that we are working together. If you would like to know the hashtag, it will be written here and in the description box below. I haven't checked to see if nobody's had the Trust Cal 2022, so, you know. I'm gonna check that and then confirm it for you. If you um, participate in Ravelry and would like a Ravelry thread, do comment and let me know down below. Or if you would just like me to create a blog post where we can all put our thoughts, ideas, and comments on, also let me know in the description box below. Thank you for joining me in this crafty adventure and I'm very, very, very excited to move forward with it because I don't know, I, I really want to do a community project and I feel this is, this is going to be fun. But anyway, let's trust each other and continue on with the trust shawl process. Back to the Clarissa of the past. So for this pattern, you will need the stitch, which I've gotten from this book and will be written up in my blog. You will need your sock set. In this case, I'm using this lovely one. And this is the contrasting mini that will make up the center panel. And you will also need a 3.5 millimeter hook. Okay, so these are the tools that we will need along with this tutorial. So before we get started with this beautiful uh, sock set in making this particular design here, I want to walk you through the steps of crocheting the stitch with a much thicker yarn, okay? So, setting aside our beautiful layout, the stitch we're gonna be working up is this stitch right here, and it is found in the Vogue Dictionary of Crochet Stitches, page 59. So that is going to be my guiding light. I am gonna modify it a little bit, because I want to start with single crochets. So as you saw from this um, shawl sample, we are going to be starting from the middle panel and then working our way outwards, all right? So, so we should start with 18 double crochets. Now I chose to do foundation double crochets for this, but you can choose to do chains and then add three for that, but we need 18 stitches. Once we have our 18 stitches, we're going to begin row two and we're going to do a chain of three. We're going to turn and we're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. Now this chain three will count as a stitch, okay? Once we've completed that double crochet, we will begin our pattern repeat. And that begins with a chain of three, skipping two stitches, doing a single crochet, chain three, and single crochet in the next stitch. Then we are going to chain three again, we are going to skip two stitches, okay, so this is one and two that we've skipped. And we're going to do two double crochets, or we're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, so there's my two double crochets. 
And this is the pattern repeat that we're going to do once more. Okay. So once again, we're going to chain three. We are going to skip two stitches and we're going to do single crochet and a chain three and a single crochet in the next stitch. There's my second single crochet. Okay, then we're going to chain three again. And we're going to skip two stitches. And we are going to work two double crochets to end our row two. So that is one, and this is two. If you're curious, I'm using a six millimeter hook, it's a wooden hook and some cotton yarn. <laughs> That's why it's so sticky. To complete row two, we are going to chain three and turn. Now remember, this chain three will count as the first stitch for row three, okay? This is what our row two looks like. We've got two double crochets, and then we've got our groups of single crochets and chain threes in between all of these, okay? So now for row three, we are going to double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, or, you know, before we do that, let's, let me just grab some more yarn so I have an easier time of it. Okay, so let's chain one. After we've chained one, we're gonna move over to the chain three between our single crochets, and we're gonna do four double crochets in this space. So row three is pretty simple because we are just basically gonna be working double crochets and then chain ones. So as I said, we are working four double crochets into this chain three space that sits between our two single crochets. And this is third double crochet and fourth double crochet. And then we are going to chain one and we're gonna work a double crochet in the next two double crochets. So like I said, for this row, we're just gonna be using our double crochet stitches. And my second double crochet right here. And no, this is not in slow motion. I'm just purposely trying to crochet slowly. <laughs> chain one. And after this chain one, we are going to work four double crochets into the space between our single crochets. Once we've completed that, we will chain one and complete our row three with two double crochets. So, what we are doing here is, if you've noticed, our combinations of four double crochets and chain ones still leave us with the same width as the previous rows, right? And the chain ones account for the stitches that we are skipping, okay? And I just wanted to make that clear um, for the following rows that we're going to be working. <laughs> So again, chain one, and that means we skip our chain space from the, sp uh, the row below, and we're going to finish with a double crochet in the last two stitches. End row three and start row four. We are going to chain three and turn 
please remember that this chain 3 counts as a stitch. Okay, so I'm just double checking my instructions for row 4. We are going to do a double crochet in the next stitch. So this part is pretty standard, right? We always begin with a double crochet. And next we are going to chain two. Okay, and then we are skipping our chain one from the previous row and we are also skipping a double crochet. So we are going to work a double crochet in the two middle double crochets of the fan. So like I said, that means that we are skipping the chain one space and one double crochet. And we're working a double crochet into the next two stitches. That's one double crochet. That's two double crochets. There we go. And after we've completed this two double crochet group, we are chaining two. which will account for one double crochet we have left and the chain from the previous row. And once we've done that, we are going to work a double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay. So basically for this row, we are making groups of two double crochets. <laughs> After you've completed this double crochet, chain two. Skip the chain one space from the previous row and one double crochet. And make one double crochet in the next two double crochets. one and this is two and then just to finish off the row we are going to do a chain two and we're going to end with two double crochets and these are the four row repeats that you will do to complete the center panel of the shawl that we're designing together. Don't panic, I will work through these again because the first row one that we did, you know, it was a little bit different. It was a foundation double crochet row and now we're just gonna be working normal double crochets. No need for that foundation. But here we are, I like to call this stitch the rising sun stitch. As I said, there are four rows that we will repeat. So let's get to that. Back to row one, the first row of our repeat, which is chain starts where the other ends with the chain three, turn. Now we are ready to start row one once again. And it's simply double crochet into each stitch and chain, okay? Which will bring us back to our 18 count. So once again, it's one double crochet in each stitch slash chain. Very simple and easy to keep track of because you just have to, once again, be at an 18 stitch count.
we should have 18 stitches. And we repeat row two once again, and row two is this row here. Row two is this row. Okay. So we chain three and turn, and we work a double crochet. Chain three skip two single crochet chain three single crochet in the next stitch. Once again, we're repeating row two. So the next step would be to chain three, skip two stitches, and make two double crochets. Once you complete these two double crochets, we're going to chain three again skip two stitches and make a single crochet. Following this single crochet we do a chain of three and in the next stitch we do a single crochet. chain three again, skip two and end the row with two double crochets. And this completes row two of our pattern repeat. Now for row three, we're going to repeat this one that's got like those shells in the single crochet spaces. So we're going to chain three and turn. And we're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. And work four double crochets into the chain three between the single crochets. Chain one again, work a double crochet in the next two stitches. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't complete the four double crochets. Right, once you've completed your four double crochets, chain one and work a double crochet in the next two stitches. Then chain one. And work four double crochets between the single crochets. We've completed row three and now we are going to do row four which is the last row of the repeat. And that is where we have groups of two double crochets separated by chain twos. Okay. So we're going to chain three and turn, work a double crochet in the next stitch, chain two, and now we are going to skip the single crochet and the next double crochet and work one double crochet in the next two double crochets. So this is one. And this is two. 
Now we are going to chain two again. We are going to skip two stitches, which would be the double crochet and the chain space, and then work double crochet on top of the double crochet. And this is what we will repeat um, throughout the row, right? So now we're going to chain two again, skip two, and work two double crochet. is the second double crochet, chain two, and working our last two double crochets of this row, which is row four, by the way. <laughs> and like I said, this would be row four, so that completes what I call like the sunrise stitch because it just looks that way. We're going to keep repeating this four more times for a total of six repeats. But we're going to end on row, a row one, okay? So we complete six repeats and then we do a row one. And that is the center panel for our shawl, okay? So it's going to look something like, sorry, it's a mess. It's gonna look something like this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a row one, okay? Now I'm gonna go wind up and be back. That was fast because I am back with my finished center panel. This is what it looks like. Um, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, like I said, and I finished on a row one of, like, if I was starting my seventh round. And this was a 20 gram mini, and I've got 10 grams left over, all using a 3.5 millimeter hook. And now for some handy dandy gauge information. So, two pattern repeats are three and a half inches tall. And then it is three point, a little bit more than, yeah, 3.25 inches wide. So that is my gauge for this small section. Thus, we complete this week's tutorial. Please stay tuned for the next one and happy crafting.